Hello, good afternoon, everybody. I am Alejandra Otolina. It's so nice to see you there. I cannot see your faces, but I can chat with you. So get ready to make us questions or to answer our questions and participate, okay? And uh, we are here this time to talk about global stage. Macmillan's new series for primary schools, primary high segment schools. And why do I say high segment? Well, because from the very beginning, you can see the motto of this series is educating the leaders of tomorrow. And this takes us to some very specific uh, concepts or specific situations. Let's see, it's loading, there it is. When I say high segment, I mean bilingual schools, but bilingual schools in all the spectrum, because in Argentina, there are different types of bilingual schools. And Rosa, nice to see you, to hear you. Okay, welcome, good. Hello, Rosa, again, good. Um, there are different kinds, I was telling you, of bilingual schools, okay? To use global stage, you need several, more than seven, or at least seven hours of English a week. Now, it doesn't matter if you have different subjects, if you teach uh, language and history, language and sciences, you don't need that. But yes, you need several contact hours a week and a certain oh, philosophy. Yeah. So this is why I'm saying bilingual schools, okay? Um, the, just from the name of the series, Global Stage, we know that there is a specific concept, a global world. And this pandemic has shown us that we are in a global world where everybody can interact with everybody else. We all share problems and difficulties and perhaps solutions, okay? So the concept of a global world goes hand in hand with educating the leaders of tomorrow. Uh, working for or in a bilingual school with this concept will lead to the use, the choice of very specific materials. And um, from my experience in bilingual schools, I used to work in different bilingual schools and different kinds of bilingual schools. We always had the feeling that if we worked in primary, we made a great effort to make them communicate. Okay, the focus was on communication, on understanding, on enlarging their vocabulary to interact as naturally as possible, uh, work on pronunciation and fluency, reading comprehension in the broad sense. As the students grew up and moved on to middle school or secondary school, and they were like uh, pressed by international exams of different kinds, Many secondary school teachers complained about the lack of grammar the students had, the lack of accuracy the writings showed. So this is why I'm saying that to work with this concept of a global world in a bilingual school, high segment and high segment, but at the same time aiming high with good, clear aims and to avoid that situation, the lack of accuracy, the lack of grammar and all that, specific and special or specially designed materials. And this is precisely what you're going to have in global stage. And of course, this goes hand in hand with very clear and specific aims in terms of what is the language? What aspects of the language do I need to help these students succeed in a global world in the future and at this high level. And of course, to achieve that, I need a clear, um, specific methodology. When I say clear, specific, effective, it doesn't mean one or another approach. Maybe eclectic, but clear. And of course, the focus on all the skills. And I went, when I say all skills, I don't mean only the linguistic skills. Of course, I need the four basic skills. But at the same time, because I'm talking about success at another level, in terms of communication, in terms of uh, confidence, in terms of uh, speaking in public, in, in social terms, I'm speaking about other skills, social and emotional skills. And all that, because they are skills, they don't grow on trees, they need to be developed. And how? By the teacher. 
when throughout the course in every single lesson stage by stage starting small as english people say so this is what you are going to find in global stage and it's important because when we think about the future future generations um interacting in a global world but in the global world in the future they are probably going to have other jobs jobs that we cannot even think of now jobs that we cannot describe now so we have to prepare them for everything through and with english okay so this is why global stage is global because it aims at this global world but at the same time it develops and it helps teachers work on each and every single skill that will allow this child to succeed in the future in this uh global world but thinking about the future and uh talking about the motto educating the leaders of tomorrow there is a very close connection between global stage and project zero project zero comes from the university of harvard the school of education of the university of harvard and it's based on that precisely i mean what should these children learn today to guarantee that they succeed in the future and how can they visualize their learning and how can we make their learning visual or visible and um how can we achieve that how can we develop their imagination when we talk about project zero we think about three basic things see think and imagine or wonder those are three key words starting from a very concrete level what can you see what can you perceive what can you notice okay but then what can you think inferences from this context how do you think they are feeling what do you think will happen next and then wondering imagining okay because after all these are skills and they are to be developed through and in every single lesson bar unit so basically and based on this project zero and considering this global world and the future of this global world well of course we need english throughout because it is an international language but apart from english in terms of the basic skills of grammar and vocabulary and reading and writing and listening we need other things we need global citizens the idea of citizenship um, acting responsibly taking care of the world and taking care of one another uh, being or becoming self-directed thinkers being autonomous having initiative and of course yes confident and competent communicators but at the same time with the idea of creativity this is what makes a good leader all this and english throughout all this scheme now how uh, do we show all this in global stage okay global stage has a dual approach to language it's got a language book and a literacy book okay um the language program as you can imagine because we are aiming so high and we are developing so many skills in a natural and communicative way has been very carefully graded the language book focuses on the building of the different blocks that make up the language skills and systems okay the 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 spoken medium the written medium ph uh, phonetics if you want a phonology and the literacy book focuses on literacy concepts uh but also and very deeply so critical literacy because remember that we are developing what we have here in the third point self-direction thinking skills social and emotional learning or social and emotional skills and global citizenship so all this through english you can imagine that doing this the students are going to have great fun are going to develop skills are going to 
think. And this is something that very often we find, we find it really hard. A long time ago, they used to bring some of these skills from the Spanish section. Now, unfortunately, they don't. And it's up to us, teachers of English, to teach all this and to work on all this as we teach them English and grammar and vocabulary and so on. So basically, I would say, and it's loading, uh, five different concepts to remember. Starting from left, bottom left, I would say children as competent speakers and writing and writers. That is, children as competent, proficient communicators, if you want in both mediums, the written medium and the spoken medium, which involves being able to debate, giving logical arguments. It's not just writing about a picnic by the river. It goes far beyond all that. Uh, it's a dual approach because we work on language, but at the same time we work on literacy, and literacy including reading, writing, literary terms, and critical literacy. There is the notion of global citizenship, and this is not just because we wanted to include a page about citizenship and talk about taking care of the environment, but we followed the UNESCO guide. So the course is mapped to the UNESCO guide, okay? And of course, we want to aim at self-direction and uh, critical thinkers or thinking skills, and of course, if you think about leaders, the digital part is essential because it comes with other skills. Um, my colleague, Mariela, is going to explain all the digital components. I will focus on the two books, right? Let's go down. Let me go down a little bit. And here we are. Uh, I was telling you that there is a page. And if you read the heading, it says global citizenship. But this is not just a page, it's much more than that. And it's matched to the UNESCO guide, which I was mentioning before. And we aim at, every time you see this, we aim at three types of skills. Cognitive skills, social emotional skills, and behavioral skills. Because we want to develop knowledge, we want our students to uh, learn something, but also understanding and showing what they are understanding, which is Project Zero from uh, Harvard University. Emotional and social skills, a sense of belonging, empathy, understanding globally, I mean, understanding the world, understanding different cultures, different traditions, different values maybe, and acting responsibly, accordingly, okay? And in general, in terms of behavioral skills, aiming at a more peaceful and more sustainable world. So uh, all the time, but from different angles and in different ways, you will have this, see, think, and wonder, okay? You're gonna have, uh, for example, assessment of how, uh, what the child, what allowed the child to learn or how the child feels he has learned how he feels he learns better, that is self-assessment of my own skills, but also pictures, pictures and videos that will make, make him think because this can be anything. And I can see bananas, but maybe it's something different. And this makes me wonder at another level, okay? If you work at these three levels, you are going to develop a lot of other skills beyond the traditional linguistic skills. Up to here, any questions? You may write something, hello from Margaret okay, hello Mariana, welcome. All right, no questions? So far, so good. Okay, so now I invite you to walk with me through the book, okay? I want to show you the language book and the literacy, the literacy book. There are two, com two basic components, the language book and the literacy book. As you can see, there is no workbook which doesn't mean that you are not going to have practice. You have practice in the students and you have digital practice as well. And of course, the literacy book has got another kind of practice that goes hand in hand with literacy, literacy critical literacy and literature, okay? Now, uh, as I was telling you at the beginning, we have to play at two levels. We have to teach at two levels. We want this 
natural, spontaneous communication that requires uh, a high level of language, that requires interesting vocabulary, but at the same time, knowing that the children can understand and the children have got a lot of passive vocabulary and grammar, at the same time, we need to, in a way, systematize that more gradually. So you have formal vocabulary presentations and formal grammar presentations, okay? The theory is highly communicative, but at the same time, it has vocabulary presentations and grammar systematizations. Now, how is the vocabulary presented? Of course, we have an interesting number of words because these children probably know a lot of these words, but the vocabulary, although it's presented through a visual context, they have to interact with an audio, they have to discover something, so there is a context. A context that is both a listening context and a visual context. And then they have to do something, something very, very simple, like a simple task. But if you look down, if you look at the bottom here, it says, um, close your eyes and visualize. This visualizing things. Why? When you close your eyes, if I say ruler, your ruler, the ruler you imagine, will be different from the ruler I imagine, but both will share characteristics. This visualization, if you do it regularly in terms of vocabulary, you will see how you are developing the third stage. Remember, we said see, see think, and wonder. Every time you tell students to visualize, they are imagining things. They are flying away from the concrete classroom in a way. So this visualization is something relatively new uh, that has very interesting results and that will make students think. And that's very important. This I'm showing you now is book uh, one, level one. The question here is, as you can imagine, is it for first grade? Well, that depends on you. That depends on how, to what extent your children, your students can or not read and write. As you can see, there's writing. As you can see, there are lots of words and they are not in block capitals because this is international, okay? And you know that in Argentina, we are the only country where uh, students learn to read and write just in block capitals. So if they cannot write in Spanish fluently, then this is better for second grade. If they can, in many bilingual schools, uh, they do reading and writing through phonics in kinder. If that is the case, then this is fine for first grade, okay? Now, once the vocabulary has been presented and practiced, of course, if the teacher spoke, you've got step by step what games you need to do, what activities you need to do, then you are always going to get something like this. What I'm pointing at in exercise D this is a chart, a simple chart, which implies classification. And to classify, you need to observe. And to observe, that's the first stage of the three things. Remember, see, think, and visualize or imagine or wonder. Well, to, um, to complete a chart, you need to observe. And to observe, you need to see and think. That is critical thinking. Classifying something so simple is something that may be a problem if the child is not trained for that. And it's a skill, so we have to develop critical thinking skills. And this is the best way of doing that. Classification all the time. Um, of course, then we have the uh, fun part, the oral part, the singing part. Songs are necessary in the primary school and they are here, of course. The grammar part is not the core, and the songs are rich in terms of grammar and vocabulary, okay? Uh -huh. Let's go on. Loading. Okay. I was telling you that we do need grammar. There's a very well uh, graded or very carefully graded grammar program, and the grammar is very nicely presented 
on independent pages, through independent contexts. Why is this important? Because maybe a child was absent, maybe you were absent, maybe they don't remember what you did last class, maybe they had, I don't know, sports day or founders day last time and you were not there. So when you open the book for this lesson, everything is new. Of course, grammar comes in a context. And contexts, all the contexts in the series, either listenings or uh, comic strips like this one or readings, they all have a lot of interesting values, attitudes, actions to be imitated, actions worth imitating. And uh, when I say actions worth imitating or actions um, that deserve reflecting on, uh, they are actions that are everyday situations. They are not far-fetched. Look at this very simple example. There is a grandpa. The grandpa has been trying to phone a friend for ages, and the friend doesn't answer the phone. So the grandson is there and suggests he's writing an email. The grandpa does have a tablet, but he uses it to watch videos with his wife. So he doesn't know how to write an email. He has never used the tablet for writing an email. So the grandson teaches the grandpa. This is an everyday situation. I mean, my children teach me and have taught me a lot of things. And there are values. There is respect. There is the global world. We all belong here and we all have to learn from one another. Nobody knows everything. Okay. And this... Um, leads us to, yes, a grammar point. A grammar point that is represented in a chart, a grammar point a corresponding to a rule that the child has to discover. They have to look for examples in the text and use the examples to complete the chart that systematizes the grammar they are learning. They, uh, they've got a listening. Okay, thank you, Mariana, for your comments. Yes. Yes, they like that. You are right. They, they like and they need that. Whatever you, re whatever you learn from a context, you remember it much more than we, when you learn just from a sentence. Okay. And then there, are, uh, there is an exercise. And all the time at the bottom of this page in the grammar section, there is pair work or writing. There is production. But before the production, there is a not so free exercise. Why? Because we want the grammar to be practiced in a controlled way. Uh, although this is aiming high, and this is for a bilingual school, you can see that always you will find number one, two, three, four. Very seldom are you going to find a number five. Most of the time we stop at number four. Why? Because we respect attention difficulties. We respect number of students in the classroom. This is not a grammar-based course because most of the time students in a bilingual school already use this. So the grammar is there, but it's short and sweet. We never want to make them uh, feel, you know, bored or tired or fed up. That's not the idea at all. So they explore the language. In fact, it's called explore language. They explore the language to systematize on their own the grammar. Once the grammar has been taught, we move on to what is the second presentation of vocabulary, which coincides with the development of global citizenship. So in this section, we always have a big question, something for debating, something to make them think and wonder. Uh, maybe the, I mean, the idea is that they should answer in English, but maybe they mix. In bilingual schools, very often they mix. When they don't find the language to say things, they mix Spanish and English, and this is to be accepted because the focus, the focus here is on the thinking, reflection part. In this case, technology. Technology in different schools. Technology in different schools in different realities, in different countries, okay? And so there is a listening Different children uh, talk about technology in their schools. And you can see here, or at least I'm pointing this, the American flag and the British flag. Because this is a global series. This is global English. Okay? So because we want leaders, they will need both American English, British English. They have to communicate. And the kind of English will not matter so much as long as it is correct and appropriate. So, 
This is the second presentation of vocabulary. There is always a context. There is a listening. And you can see, for example, here, we are talking about different children in different parts of the world. And this is level one, but we are talking about the UK and Bangladesh. So this is why I said we are aiming high. And this is for a specific kind of school and a specific kind of teacher. Not everybody can teach this way. Not everybody can teach in these schools, okay? So uh, you have a great challenge, and I'm, I'm sure you can uh, be up to that challenge. Now, once you have learned and practiced and listened to that vocabulary in different natural situations, then you have the chance to personalize. So you have from a big question, a personal question, like, what technology do you use in your school, in your area, or in your country? Are there different realities? Okay. And this is very, very important if you think about a leader. A good leader should know different realities. Uh, so we have had two vocabulary presentations, a grammar presentation. Okay, it's loading. Give me a second. Come a second uh, grammar presentation, okay? A second grammar, it's not loading, it's saying here we are. Again, the format, the layout of the grammar presentation, same as the previous one. There is a short context and everyday situation. They are all in the same house, the mum, the dad, and the child. They are all connected to different devices. The child has to say something to the mum, but he doesn't speak to the mom. He texts. Is that good, bad, debating? Is that what happens? Is I mean, what are the advantages and disadvantages? What do you use your internet for or your tablet for or your mobile phone for? And that gives me the chance that becomes a context for me to teach grammar, grammar that they discover, they complete the rule, and then they practice again. If you look at the email that they have to complete it's short and again you've got up to number four and at the end uh, again at the end pair work okay um we go we advance in the unit and we are coming to the more productive part because up to now we have had a lot of input sessions vocabulary grammar a lot of listening videos that you will see with mariela but then comes the moment in which the students have to produce. And they have to produce accordingly. In this uh, series, at this stage, at this level, we don't want them to produce just sentences. We don't want them to produce meaningless or repetitive things. On the contrary, we want them to produce interesting pieces of work. So uh, they start from a video, they start from a listening, they practice vocabulary, but then they have to make decisions. They have to choose. In this case, they use a device. They have seen different devices, devices that have got a screen and devices that don't have a screen. Well, they have to choose one and talk about it. What they use it for, what is it like, if what it, it is good for, okay? This may be done in groups. So this, this requires production, group work, a lot of critical thinking because they have to observe, make decisions, choose, select the information they're going to use and how they're going to represent it because then they have to make a presentation and they choose how they present the material, okay? Um, so a very interesting production stage, but this would be the oral part. What is the same is the written part. We also want, but remember I told you that very often in the secondary school or in the middle school, teachers complain about the lack of accuracy. Well, to avoid that, we want them to produce a lot of English, but a lot of accurate English. So the program for the writing part is again very carefully graded, and we start from scratch. We start from punctuation marks. And then there is assessment, think it over. The child has to go through what he has done, what he has learned, and how he has learned it, reflecting on his own learning process. Uh, and we go on. And uh, now we move on to the literacy book. 
When we think of a literacy book, we think about literature, but it's much more than that, okay? There is a phonics review, there is literacy review in every unit, but also in every unit, the units are topic-based, okay? In the student's book, in the language book, and also in the literacy book. And of course, the material you have in the literacy book goes hand in hand with the topic in the language book. For every unit, you are going to have two interesting stories. One fiction, one non-fiction. Now, look at the visuals. This is level one. The visuals are highly exploitable, working and working on and thinking about the three stages I told you about, working or focusing on the see, think, and imagine, or see, think, and wonder, okay? All that is respected here both in the fiction part and in the non-fiction part, clearly in these activities. Look at the, I'm not going to show you everything because it would take ages, but look at the pictures. This is level one. They are absolutely great. And between the, the fiction and the non-fiction, there is always a link. So the stories are related to the language book and between the two also. There is always a pre-reading or a get ready to read page that links both the fiction and the non-fiction story. As we advance, let me go down here. I want to show you, this is level three, for you to see how the images and the stories grow together with the child, okay? Again, a picture as a trigger, a picture to, for example, observe what the girl is doing, what the different characters are doing, but also to imagine. First of all, to make a um, to make an inference, like from the expression in her face, what do you think? What is she doing? She's reading. See, what do you think she's reading from the expression on her face? Is it a terror story? Is it what is it? And then let's imagine, for example, what characters do you think she's going to find? What may happen in the story? Okay, imagining things, developing this or these skills. Look at the pictures. This would be the fiction part, Alice's Adventure. And again, a connection between Alice's Adventure and the non-fiction part. When you read fiction, when you read a short, when you read fiction, you imagine. And what happens in your brain when you imagine things? Or when you read different things in real life, your, your brain re has to behave in different ways. When you read for detail, it's one thing. When you read quickly to find one word, it's another thing. And when we read all the text for gist, it's another thing. So what happens in your brain? A connection. And then we go to nonfiction, how the brain works. So you see how everything is linked. Everything... Um, Everything builds on what you have in the language book and what came before. So you see this is level three, but the kind of language, the kind of knowledge, the kind of understanding that we want is really interesting, modern, original, challenging if you want, okay? And of course, we have a very carefully written, a very complete teacher's book that gives you everything a general walkthrough with very general objectives, both for the language book and for the literacy book, and then all the step-by-step -step thing, like in, I don't know, El Gourmet or Utilissima or something like that. So uh, you've got absolutely everything you need. You don't need anything else. Your children will develop a lot of skills in English, but basically, thinking, critical thinking, and that is essential. And because this is a very productive series, your students are going to communicate and they are going to communicate accurately, which is the word that very often is missing. So now Maria will show you all the digital components. Let's go on. Thank you, Maria.
Hi everyone, thank you. Thanks for uh, being here, for having joined us. And I'm going to show you very briefly because there are a lot of digital resources available for this series, what, you, what we offer uh, with Global Stage, yes? For teachers, we have, first of all, access to Navio app. I will tell you in a minute what this is about. The test generator, which is an application where you can design your own test based on the tests that are already in the system. So you can choose which activities you want to use in the test. We also have the enhanced teacher's book, so you can uh, read it in a digital format and consult it in a digital format, and also the teacher's resource bank. I'm going to start there to show you all the uh, different material that you will find in the teacher's resource bank. Uh, for the language book resources, you will find, of course, the audios and the videos, extra language, language review worksheets, grammar worksheets, and also uh, write about printouts. And for the literacy book resources, you will find audios and videos as well, literacy review worksheets, phonics support, graphic organizers for visual um, thinking routines, what Ale showed you at the beginning, and also the story map. Yes, these are all resources for the series. You will also find tests, of course, letter to parents in Spanish explaining in a, for every unit what are the aims and objectives for their for their children to what they have what they want what they need to achieve also Cambridge exam materials and also curricula and framework for other uh, exams such as the Cambridge uh, European framework the Cambridge and learner exams uh, Cambridge primary uh, exams are uh, second language uh, for second language learning, the Common Core State Standards, so all the correlation charts for different uh, uh, different exams. Um, Laura, ah, sorry, I was I thought they were referring to me. Uh, okay, so this as regards the teachers' resource bank. Then uh, the teachers' app on Navio. Navio is uh, an application that I will show you in a minute, and it includes. Tap and teach lessons, integrating the content. Tap and teach lesson is the place to go if you want to present uh, the resources in a digital way. Yes, it's the presentation tool for your classes. You will find the content for language and literacy book, flashcards, the videos, the audio, all the multimedia is embedded in the tap and teach lessons. Uh, also progress tracker and a reward system. Because with Navio, teachers can deliver other kinds of lessons. Uh, what is Navio? Well, Navio is different from other platforms. It's a digital experience. Navio is a digital experience. It's more than just a digitalized uh, course book. It's a learning and teaching pathway with different tools and resources for teachers. They are all integrated on the same planes and also for students. For students, Navio uh, encourages greater participation and better language acquisition. Uh, the rationale behind Navio is gamification. What do we mean by this? Um, we know that what motivates um, players of most computer games is the challenge to earn points or badges and to accumulate enough to advance to the next level. So when we import the same principle to uh, the design of a classroom app, uh, app or online activities, that is gamification. So students think they are playing, but we know they are learning in a 3D world environment uh, as, if they were, as, as if they were playing a video game. But actually, they are doing the same activities they have in the course books in this, um, in this environment. Um, so, um, uh, as we say, as I said, they think they are playing, but we know they are learning, yes? They have more exposure to the language, uh, they uh, repeat activities. I always tell that it's more likely that a student comes back to a game in the computer than doing an activity in an activity book, for example. 
So this idea of repeat repetition reinforcement uh, provides um, better opportunities for language acquisition. I'm going to show you very briefly uh, some of the tools that you will find in Navio. Yes, when you download uh, the application, which comes free with your uh, teachers um, in the teacher's book, you will have uh, an access code and then you download the, the app and you can use it uh, in, in the classroom uh, using um, an interactive whiteboard or a computer connected to a, to a projector or a TV, whatever is your uh, your uh, your tools in the school so you will find the tap and teach lesson which is the presentation tool the students app on navio this game that students are going to have also uh, the enhanced teachers book the progress tracker test generator all these resources the resource bank and also the manage class uh, tool oh, just a second here i go Okay, so here we have tap and teach. You can download specific units not uh, in order to use them uh, offline. So this gives you the opportunity of not to clog the memory of your computer. You can choose which units you want to download. So it, um, uh, you don't need to work it, uh, to use it with internet connection. This when we will go back to, to schools, this is going to be essential. Now everything is online, but we know that we need that for the future. All right, yeah, so here you choose, for example, this is an example from Global State Tap and Teach. This means that the unit has been downloaded. So you choose where to go, which uh, section in the unit, language, uh, vocabulary, explore language, uh, the, talk about it, you choose the section. Yes, when you get there, you will find the book there and also some other tools uh, to use in the classroom. Here we have an example of listen, say, as I told you, all the multimedia is already uh, embedded in the application. You navigate through the different sections in the unit. You will also find other tools that are not uh, in, the, in the book, but we need to uh, present vocabulary, for example, flashcards, yes, because we need to reinforce vocabulary, present in a kind of game. So you choose, they have uh, students can see the image, they can read the word, they can listen. To the to the word so they learn vocabulary sorry just a second okay here some simple tools for example a marker yes a mask yes you can uh, cover part of the of images digitally yes but for example if you are presenting a story you can create suspense preview um what students are going to listen you you choose this um the uh, the way you want to use these tools this is very important because um what navio offers teachers is the point of view of not just the digitalized book the class what the tools we need in a class to make them more engaging so it's uh, it's actually it's it's great because we have that point of view the point of view of a class in action um all right i'm going to show you yes here's uh, an example from the literacy book fiction yes you have the stories also the videos as i told you for the for both the fiction and the non-fiction stories the songs the animated songs as well And one of the tools that I told you that it um, has to do with the rationale of gamification is the students, uh, the lesson rewards. Students get rewards when they play in their game. I will show you in a second. But we can also uh, give students rewards in the class. Yes, because, the, uh, because of how they behave in the class, their achievements. So it's not just 
language, what we are rewarding, but it's also the attitude. You know, this is a holistic approach to learning. So this is also reflected in uh, on Navio. So here we have a class that you can create and you can also uh, track your students' progress. You create the class, you can take the attendance here. Students love this to see themselves, their, their names on the computer, on the screen, yes. And then you can also divide students into groups. We know that collaboration is one of the, oh, sorry, sorry, here. I have a problem moving the, the slides, yes. So you can reward individual students or the whole class or groups, yes, you can reward them. And then when they uh, join your class, the points, these uh, rewards that they get in the lesson, when they get online, they are going to be updated onto their apps. So they will receive classroom points. And I will show you in a minute how they are going to use these classroom points um, on their apps. Yes, just a second, here we go. Okay, now I'm going to move to the students, what students have. Uh, first of all, they have the game, yes? When they get the student's book, they have an access code, that comes with the book and they have the game. They also have the digital language books and also the, the sorry, the digital language book and the digital literacy book, yes? Of course, you can also, um, we also have the chance to uh, offer you all, only the digital uh, book and they will also get this, yeah? You can have the printed and the digital option. But when they get the printed book, they also have the digital book, sorry if I may. <laughs> I don't want to confuse you. Okay, so students create an avatar. Yes, this is also part of a gamification environment. They can choose uh, the, uh, the look of the avatar. And as you can see, they have different points. Yes, the, the points that they have earned with their activities. Yes, this acts as extrinsic motivation. Yes, they not only are uh, practicing language, but they are also creating their uh, world, yes? So they choose different things, different things that they can buy in the store for their avatars. This is a, um, an image from the game, yes? It's visually very attractive. So students think, uh, are going to think that they are actually in a, a playing with a computer game. They have different activities, language activities, a variety of activities. For example, listen and choose in this case, or, um, well, again, this is listen and choose, sorry. So I have a problem. I don't know what's wrong with this here. Okay. Uh, again, listen and choose, but here they have the word. This is part of the grammar. Similar activities to the ones they have in the book, yes? listen and order yes they follow the same structure as the units but they need to do these activities in order to move to the next level yes and advance in the uh, applications mm -hmm. and when they finish an activity they get these rewards these points yes um what is interesting is that Usually, most of the activities, they, especially the um, language and grammar activities, they have to do these activities twice. And the second time, uh, they have a timer. So there's an extra challenge, yes? And they need to do the activities. The activity can, be just what, um, can also be just watch a video, watch the video from the story. They need to watch the video again in order to move to the next uh level to move to the next activity in the unit and get these rewards yes so here they choose the green the green uh the, the the green image means that they have already done this activity this is an example from explore language yes and they also have the digital and the uh, the digital literacy book and the digital language book yes so they have the game and the and both versions of the book 
in a digitalized way. They move around the book. Yes, in this case, it's from literacy, fiction, reading. They navigate, it's very easy, it's very intuitive for children. Actually, they always teach teachers how to move around. Yes, here's an example. They have a, oh, again, they, they, they also have some tools if they want to write something on the books or mark or circle. Here's another example. Watch and listen, they have the videos. The language book, language talk about it. These are just examples from the digitalized versions of the books. Yes. They have all the pronunciation, the different activities, they, it follows the same structure as the book. Okay, so this has been very short. There are a lot of tools that I can show you. We usually offer specialized uh, trainings. For, uh, for teachers, schools who adopt this material. This is just a, a very brief tour uh, on, the, on the Navio app Navio. digital uh, resources. So I don't know if you have any questions. Yes, no. Right, any question? No. Okay. All right. Okay, so if there aren't any questions, Ali, I don't know if you have any other comment. No, it's okay. Thank you very right. much for being here. Thank you for your effort. Thank you for listening to us. And remember that if you have any doubts, you would like to have an inspection copy, get in touch with us, okay? And we can always offer you virtual uh, digital uh, talks, training sessions, whatever you need for you or your colleagues. Yes, exactly. Yes, those are our channels to communicate with us. So or contact your local representative. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mariana. Mm -hmm. Thanks everyone for being here. Okay. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.